Are you ready for a good story? This one's going to come tonight from the story of Harry Brown, sometimes called Tabernacle Brown. Um, we'll have a few good stories, I think, from this book, but I'm just going to tell one tonight. And I, I'd like to begin by reading a verse or two from Zechariah chapter 3. A remarkable scene here. Um, we read, Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? And we read about Joshua dressed in filthy garments, standing before the angel, and how his garments, filthy garments, are replaced. And this wonderful picture of what happens to a person, even as a brand. In other words, someone who is so close to destruction that he's already caught fire, so to speak. But he's rescued at the last moment. And this is a story about an elderly lady who thought there was no hope for her because she had spent her whole life living for the devil. So Harry Brown had uh, spent some remarkable years in the medical corps uh, during the First World War. And then serving in Africa, the Lord had burdened his heart for the people of Africa. But um, after some training by Christians in the assembly in Bristol, England, he felt the Lord calling him to spend the summer in evangelism in England before he went to Africa. And they had set up a tent in Tetbury, which is in Gloucestershire, and he tells the story. Now, you'll be fascinated by this. Quite a good crowd of folk came to the meetings, and we felt very encouraged. We were living with a Christian couple who had two young daughters. The third night, when I opened the meeting, I noticed a very old lady come through the door and make her way to a seat right in front of the pulpit. As she was walking down the aisle, I prayed, Lord, if that old soul is not a Christian, then it's time she was. She was there again the next night, and I prayed for her again. When I got back to the house, our hostess said, There's a parcel over there for you, Mr. Brown. Oh, did it come by post, I asked. She said, No, it was brought by the old lady who sits on that seat in front of the pulpit, and she says it's for you. I went to pick it up, and my hostess said, You better handle it carefully. What is it? Something breakable, I asked. She said, Yes, it is, but look for yourself. I opened the parcel and found it contained a dozen fresh eggs and a pound of farmhouse butter. Is that old lady a Christian, I asked. No, she said, not that we know of. Well then, I said, I'll pay a visit tomorrow. Tell me where she lives. They told me she lived in a tiny little cottage on the edge of the village, just two rooms and a bit of a kitchen. So the following day I went to visit her. I found the cottage was an old stone building with a bit of old coatswold dry walling round it. I knocked at the door, but there was no answer, so I knocked a bit louder. Still no answer. It suddenly occurred to me she was probably rather deaf, and that was why she came up to the seat in front of the pulpit. So I gave the door a good hammering, and she opened it and with a smile of welcome said, Come in, son. I went in and found myself in a very humble little home, but it was spotlessly clean. I sat down, and she sat near me so she could hear me. I said, I want to thank you for that very nice parcel you left at the house for me last night. Oh, that was nothing much, she said. I wish it could be a lot more, son. Tell me, mother, I said, are you a Christian? A troubled look came over her face, and she stared at me silently for a few moments. Then firmly she said, no, son, I'm not a Christian. 
But if you're not a Christian, I said, then what are you doing with that Bible on the table? I see it's open and you've been reading it. I have read that Bible every day since I was a little girl. Yet you're not a Christian? No, I'm not a Christian. How old are you, mother? I'm 84 years of age. 84 years of age and not a Christian? Mother, I don't you think it's about time you became a Christian? No, I certainly do not think anything of the sort. This was a bit of a shock to me. She was so emphatic and determined, there was an angry look in her eyes as she spoke. Tell me, mother, I said. Were you able to hear all that I said from the pulpit? Yes, I could hear all you said. Well then, if you heard all that I said, you know quite well what it is to happen to you if you're not a Christian. Yes, I know quite well what's to happen to me, but I'm not going to become a Christian. Mother, I beg of you, tell me clearly what you mean by saying such a dreadful thing. I mean that you want me to become a Christian at my age, but I'm not the kind of woman to do that. I've served the devil for 84 years, and I will go on serving him. I'm not going to offer God the fag end of my life. The, the word fag end is a British way of speaking about a cigarette butt, the tail end, the very last bit of her life. I've served the devil for 84 years, and I will go on serving him until the end, until I die. The fiery speech shook me, I can tell you, and I just didn't know what to say in reply. My heart sank, and I felt so helpless, but deep down in my soul I cried, Oh, Lord, help me and help this poor woman. And he did. For like a flash, I saw my opportunity, and I said, Mother, you're thinking of your 84 years in the service of the devil, and you're thinking that maybe you only have a year or so to live and you're not the kind of woman to offer to God that year or so of your life, that fag end of your life. And so you intend to go on serving the devil until the end, until you die. Mother, I'm going to tell you something. When you come to the end of that year or so, to that fag end, you will find it is the beginning and not the end. Don't you be so stupid, my son, she said scornfully. I said, I'm not being stupid, I'm being wise. And I'm telling you that when you die, it will be the beginning, not the end. The beginning of eternity for you. Not with just the fag end of it now. Eternity with God who loves you, or eternity with the devil who hates you. The choice is yours right now. She recoiled as if I had struck her a blow. And there was a terrible, anxious look in her eyes. Her face suddenly looked haggard. In a weak voice, she said, I hadn't thought of it like that. That is different. I waited and I prayed while she fought the battle. My eyes never left her face until I saw the change coming over her, saw it softening, saw a faint smile of relief coming over it. Then, very firmly, she said, Then, I will become a Christian now. I accept the Lord Jesus as my own personal Savior. We both knelt down, and I prayed for her, and commended her to the Lord for his help and blessing. When we got off our knees, her eyes were shining. She was happy, and so was I. But what an experience! Mother, I said, you're really happy now? Yes, my son, I'm really happy. And I thank you, and oh, how I wish you were my very own son. Mother, I said, I shall never be your very own son, but you will always be my very own daughter in the faith. She enjoyed that, always remembered it, and often mentioned it with a twinkle 
in her eyes. Anyway, he went back to visit her the next day. He said, uh, you've been reading that Bible again, I asked. Yes, I've been reading it again, but it's all so different now. How do you mean different, mother? I asked. Well, I really think the Lord has changed the water into wine. I never enjoyed it so much before, and now I can't get enough of it, she said. Well, and the story continues. He went back to see her. They had had some meetings, and, and once again he went back, but she wasn't home. He hammered away on the door, as he said, and he asked the neighbor, and the neighbor said, she was so disgusted. She said, yeah, I seen her. She was getting up into the old carrier's cart. And he a pushing of her up a disgraceful sight. Twas to be sure. Ought to have been ashamed of herself at her age, getting up into the carrier's cart like that. So the following day, he went around to the cottage again. And she was home. Come right in, my son, and sit yourself down. Mother, I said, just what have you been up to lately? And so she sat down, gave him a cup of tea and a bit of cake, and she said, uh, well now, let me tell you what I've been up to. I've been using up a bit of that fag end of my life. I got the old carrier, that would be like the delivery cart. He got the old carrier to come and pick me up and take me along to the village where I was born and lived for many years. Poor old chap had a bit of a job to get me up into the cart, and he was just about winded by the time he got me into it. When we got to the village, he had to get a couple of folk to help me get down out of the cart. I think getting out was more difficult than getting in. I made my way to the butcher's shop and went inside. He didn't look at me very closely, but said, Well, missus, what can I serve you with today? I said, I don't want any of your old meat. It's meat that perishes. He looked at me closely, and, and then he said, Bless my soul, if it ain't old Mrs. Barrett. Where have you been all these years, Mrs.? I ain't seen you for donkey's years. And what do we mean by calling my meat perishing old meat? You ought to remember I always kept the best meat in all the county. I said, "'Tis meat that perishes. "'But I've been feeding on meat that endures to eternal life. "'The meat that is the Lord Jesus, and he's now my Savior. "'I've been born again. "'So don't you call me old Mrs. Barrett, "'because I'm now new Mrs. Barrett. <laughs> "'You've been selling that kind of meat for years, "'but you want to try this new meat. "'You must believe in the Lord Jesus.'" She said, I came out and saw the baker's cart coming along the street, so I called out to him, What you got in that old van of yours? He said, I got bread in this van, missus, the best bread in all the country around. I said, Tis bread that perishes. It's the bread of life you need, which is the Lord Jesus himself. He said, Bless my soul, missus. I've been trying to think who you be, and now I knows you be old Mrs. Barrett. I said, no, I ain't old Mrs. Barrett. I be new Mrs. Barrett. <laughs> I've been born again. And that's what you need to be. And so I wandered around the village, having a word with one and another, because I got to get the most out of this fag end of my life. <laughs> so, yeah, fag end, all right. A brand plucked from the burning, taking off those filthy garments and dressing her in the robes of God's own righteousness. You know some old folks, you think they're too hard, that's too late? Never too late. The Lord is able to save them to the uttermost. Redouble your prayers. Have the courage to visit them. Sometimes they just want a listening ear. And the Lord will give you an opportunity to drop a little seed into their hardened old hearts, and God is able to save them. Even old Mrs. Barrett, at 84, became new Mrs. Barrett.